My 365 Podcasts with me, Pete Cohen. Hey everyone, welcome to My 365 Podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to have an amazing guest with me uh, today. It's so lucky sometimes to be able to meet people and uh, find out their stories. Look, everyone has got a story to tell, but some people's stories are perhaps uh, a little bit more, I don't know, out there, people who have achieved much more, but people who show us that so much more is possible. So I'd love to welcome our guest, Stevie McGuin, all the way from Northern Ireland. Stevie is an entrepreneur, uh, an ultra distance, well, he is, to his own admission, he'd probably say he wasn't a marathon runner, even though last year, uh, he run 100 marathons in 100 days. This year, he's doing 60 ultra marathons in uh, 60 days. He's a coach. He's a leader. He's a mentor to many, many, many people. And I have the, the honor of saying that he's a friend. So, Stevie, how are you, my friend? Oh, the very best, Pete. Keeping good, man. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's, it's, it's such a great pleasure. So, Stevie, tell us what you're just about to embark on and why you're doing it and uh, what you're hoping to get out of it. So uh, what I'm about to do this year on the 1st of June this year, 2016, I'm going to be leaving from a uh, house in uh, Lisbon O in Armagh and I'm going to be running um, around Ireland, the whole way around the country through every major town, every major city and uh, a lot of the small towns and villages as well through all the 32 counties and uh, I'm running 39.3 miles a day for 59 days in a row and the last day I'm going to be running from Drada to Armagh which is a total of 54 miles and uh, it's an aid of um, two very good charities here uh, one of them is the Keith Duffy Foundation Keith Duffy um, some of you might know he would have been a, a boys own singer boys own used to be a very famous group uh, worldwide boys band and the other one is for the Paddy Wallace Foundation and the Paddy Wallace Foundation is uh, by Paddy Wallace, who was a, an Irish rugby player. And uh, it, the, all the funds uh, from both those foundations are going to autism and fighting blindness. Wow. And whilst, whilst I'm running around the country, I'm going to have my hand painted yellow. And the reason that I have my hand painted yellow is because yellow represents communication and it represents friendship. And one of the challenges that... Um, people with autism can have, and it's also a challenge that many adults can have at different times, is, uh, is relationships and uh, making friends with people. So as I'm running around the country, I'm going to be extending the hand of friendship. And uh, as we all know, friendship um, crosses all different uh, divides, different ethnicities, different political groups, different everything, and it helps to resolve a lot of challenges and um, builds good bridges Wow. Wow. So how can, right from the start, how can people help? How can people get involved? Because people can follow, it's called Stevie's Epic Adventure. How, how can people find out about what you're doing and, and support you in this process? Yeah, well, there's loads of, there's loads of really good information on the website and there's a nice video there too. And it's called Stevie's Epic Adventure.com. S-T-E-V-E-Y-S. Stevie's Epic Adventure.com. Or they can go to Facebook, the same name as well. And uh, and come on board if you know if you fancy coming out uh, for a, a long run or a short run or a walk or just to come out and clap and support or if you play a bit of music or sing a song or hmm. if you'd like to even get, come on board and give us a give us a bit of a donation we'd really appreciate that too even just following us and helping us spread helping us spread the word um, so it's it's going to be like um it's running yes I'm I'm going to be running uh, that's the means of transport. But it's like a, it's like a, a big road trip. Uh, there's, there's people going to be joining in with their camper vans and stuff and following us around the country as well too. So if you fancy taking a little bit of a holiday somewhere in Ireland, um, come on board. We'd, we'd, lo we'd love to see you, see you out there. The more the merrier. Wow. And so tell me, how, how did you get into this? Because last year you, you did something incredible. You ran 100 marathons in 100 days. Why did you decide to do that? Where did that number come from? And you weren't, were you a runner before? No, um, I wasn't a runner. I enjoyed running an odd time. I made a run uh, once every three or four weeks or something like that. And I've been more into like bodyweight exercises and stuff. I always had a passion for exercise. 
Um, but uh, for this last seven years, I've been working with people to help them to get results in different areas of their life, whether it be their their health, their business, their relationship, whatever that be. And um, I was running a three-day workshop, and there was a, a fella came along to the three-day workshop called Larry McGuire, and we done a visioning process. And Larry came out of the visioning process, and he he shared a vision that he had had previously before, uh, maybe three or four years previous to this and he had forgotten about it and he came back up and he came outside and he was just he was he was electrified he was lit up you know and he started to share he started to share with me he said i'd like to run 100 marathons in 100 days now i had never run a marathon myself at that time but i thought to myself wow that's such a that's such a huge goal and it's very inspiring because he wanted to do it um, in honor of his sister laura who died at the age of seven and when she died the family went through a lot of trauma, as you can imagine. And um, Laurie, as he grew older and because, had kids himself, he realized, you know, uh, how tough it must have been for, for his parents as well too. So he wanted to do something for that and he, he shared that with me. And I said to him, look, the uh, best thing to do, Laurie, I says, is come up to Arma here and we'll, uh, we'll sit down and we'll speak about it. Because a lot of people, I would find, they get, they'll get great visions, they'll get great ideas, but then, you know, their everyday life will take over and they'll forget about that thing that inspired them and go back into the humdrum. So I didn't want that to happen. So Laurie came up to me maybe a week or two later and we sat down and we spoke We spoke about it and I thought that was fine. So away he went and then I said, well, look, there's a lot more to talk about in this. So we come back again another few weeks after that and we sit down again. And he started to talk about it again. And as he started to talk about it, I got a very strong feeling, um, like a buzz coming from the inner core uh, all the way up my spine. And it was like lighting up my head. And I got a flashing image. And I seen a, an image of myself running down um, through our map past a place called the Mall. And I had, in this image, I had long hair and a beard. And at that time, I didn't have lo- long hair or a beard. And... I, I just came back into the room then momentarily and I says, Larry, I says, I'm going to do this with you. And he looked at me and he shook my hand and he says, brilliant. He says, I always knew that someone would do it with me, but I didn't know who it was going to be. I, at that stage, I hadn't run a, I hadn't run a marathon ever. Uh, the furthest I'd ever run was 10 mile, probably about seven or eight years previous to that. So I said to Larry, I'll... Um, I'll make a commitment here. I'll run five mile a day for the next 30 days in a row. And that was on the 17th of November, 2012. Because I remember it very well because I remember going to Christmas parties and having to go out at uh, 11 o'clock at night and run five mile before it hit 12 to make my commitment. <laughs> and, uh, and and that got me that got me started. And I ran before tomorrow from the end 2013. So Laurie and uh, his, his other sister then, and myself set up a foundation called the Laura McGuire Foundation. And on the 22nd of May, 2015, uh, we set out to run 100 marathons in 100 days. Um, unfortunately, Larry wasn't able to wasn't able to finish to complete the whole thing. Uh, but he was able to do 44 marathons in a row, and and also another 30 on top of that. And uh, so he became. After myself, the person with the most marathons in Ireland in a row, I, I was able to do the 100. I uh, was blessed that way. And uh, we raised a lot of money for uh, families and children out there that uh, were suffering from um, critical illnesses and um, life-threatening uh, situations. So we were able to do a lot of good. And that inspired me to, to keep on going. Wow, it's just... Uh... It's an incredible story when you when you were talking about having that image inside your mind. I think that's do you think that's something that everyone has, but they often just don't pay attention to, uh, you know, yeah. the feelings they have about doing things. Or, yeah, I do. I, I definitely, Peter. I definitely do. And like this is something that I, that I would talk about, you know, all, all the time now, even even more so now than than ever. Um, you know, I've done a lot of training in that area uh, previous and. You know, you're probably often here talking about, you know, about visualization and all these types of things. But um, I believe that when you allow yourself to come into the right feeling space, 
that you automatically, it's not that you visualize, it's that you receive the visions. Um, and it's, it's about allowing yourself to be in touch with that and in touch with your feelings. And whenever they come up, allowing yourself and giving yourself permission uh, to go with the things that feel true and right to your heart. I, you know, there can be a great confusion sometimes in this whole area as in, uh, you know, we can all have goals and, uh, you know, sometimes we've got goals that are, can be off our head and then we've got, I call them dreams, dreams that are which of our heart. But, you know, very often you end up doing things like for me, for instance, I never imagined uh, or never dreamed up uh, previous to this that I would ever run a uh, 100 marathons in 100 days. The only time marathons actually entered my head was I remember my father ran a New York marathon uh, way back in 2000, I think it was two, 2000, the year 2000, I think it was. And um, I seen him at that time and I thought to myself, gosh, that looks very tough. <laughs> you know, I think uh, maybe I'll do one of those marathons, I thought, whenever I'm maybe in the mid 30s or something, I might do a marathon, mm. maybe. And I never ever thought about it again. And, uh, you know, sometimes when things come to you that you haven't thought about unexpected, if, if they light you up, and you have that sense that it's right for you, then you have to allow yourself to take the step, you know? Well, I think um, having spent some time with you and get, get to know you a little bit, I, I think it's absolutely fascinating. You've heard that expression, an overnight success takes 10 years. And, you know, for you to be able to run that marathon, I'm sure it wasn't just about all the training um, because you have done a lot of self-development. But let's go yeah. back a little bit because yeah. Yeah. Uh, your story is very interesting. You were telling me you were a, a painter and decorator and you ended up in, in America. Just tell us a, a little bit about how you got to the place that you got to now. Um, yeah, the, the, way I got to the, the way I got to the place I am now and what I'm doing here now for me... I, it always, you know, you have these like instances in your life, uh, moments of awakening. And for me, I suppose it was after a a long week, uh, probably months, probably years of being stuck in a rut and uh, having a life where I was uh, just working and and drinking, working and drinking. And uh, that was kind of that was kind of the the routine pattern that I was in for a long time, and I suppose it it it, it really was escapism in a lot of ways. And I found myself I was in a living in an apartment in Boston, and I found myself on one Tuesday evening after a hard uh, weeks, probably drinking, still would have been working, but tough weekend, and uh, in a place of despair, and um hopelessness uh, and I was in this cycle where I didn't know anyone outside of what I was doing I knew I had friends at work and I had friends in the pub uh, and that was it and uh, I wanted more in my life but I didn't know I didn't know how to get more so I uh, I had uh, read some stuff and what I done was I, I got onto my knees and I, and I genuinely said a prayer. Now I'm not a religious person, and but I genuinely said a prayer, and I genuinely asked for help, and I instantly received I I received what well, all I could say is probably um, a freshness, a new aliveness that I'd never experienced before. Mm. And I came from a place of despair, and one minute later, I was filled with hope and joy and absolute expectation and a feeling of total certainty and knowingness that everything was taken care of and what I wanted uh, for my life, um, that, that it would come to me. Hmm. And one of, one of the first things that I'd wanted at that time was I wanted to have a girlfriend because I had uh, I'd felt very alone and I wanted somebody to share my life with. And about six weeks after that, uh, I was blessed to meet, meet Catherine and uh, myself and Catherine eventually started the business together and eventually got married and we've got three kids together now as well too. But, but that's where everything for me um, 
for me started and it was very clear in my mind at that time um, that you know if everyone could hear this could hear this message or could have this have this feeling that you know that you are enough that you are good enough and even though you may not have all the answers right now and you may have challenges in your life and there may be skills that you need to learn all of these things can all of these things can happen for you mm. if you just allow, if you just allow yourself allow yourself to to trust and and know that life's here for you wow i really appreciate um you know you're just speaking so openly and honestly because I, I just think it's it'll be very liberating for me it's liberating to hear it and i'm sure that many other people will will, will get some will get some inspiration from it but when I came to see you, um, I noticed a book. I, I noticed lots of pictures. I noticed pictures on, of you on the wall with people like Tony Robbins, uh, Bob Proctor. But the thing that really, really struck me was seeing a copy of what I believe to be the number one best personal development book of all time. And that's the book called Think and Grow Rich. And I could see the book was a bit tattered. It had definitely been read just a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, tell me, you know, how did you come across that book, and what has that book done for you? Well, um, I, I came across that book first of all. Uh, my father would have given me a co- give me a copy of that book a long time ago, and I looked at it and, and I tried I tried my best to read it, and um, but. I was unable, it just was like double Dutch to me, you know. Um, I had came from a very studious background myself. I'm a much, I would be a much more practical type of person now. I've studied a lot, a lot of stuff since and uh, then began to understand, really began to understand it. Um, but the person that, the person that really encouraged me to study it then later on was Bob Proctor. Whenever I met Bob Proctor in 2007, Bob Proctor encouraged me to set up study groups and to st- study in the think and grow rich philosophy and to teach the think and grow rich philosophy and they also give me the study notes for it and that really helped me understand it and it helped me teach the principles in it but i always look at thinking i always look at thinking rich in the book and like any any really good book will always have truth in it and the thing that always stood out for me i think and grow rich is the is the part that says see feel See, feel, and believe yourself already in possession, and yeah. take and take immediate action. That thing it was a thing that always stood out for me, and it it resonated with me so much. Um, because whenever you hear, whenever you hear truth, it resonates with you. You know that it's right. It's almost that the book is affirming what you already know deep down inside, and it's affirmed with such confirmation because it talks about. People like Luther Burbank, uh, Thomas Edison, the inventor of the electric light bulb, Henry Ford, and so many people that were extremely successful. I know Bruce Lee's got a testimony in the copy that I have, uh, and Michael Flatley. Uh, so there's such there's such wisdom, such wisdom in it. It's a book that you could read one paragraph and and meditate on it for an hour. And uh, but but Bob Proctor was the person. So I know Bob has been studying. Thinking rich for sixty years, and he's and he's still he's still studying it. But he really was the one that that converted that, that converted me across to you know till thinking rich. But as I say, any good book will always um, it'll always confirm the truth that you have inside. Well, you know, I, was, I heard something this morning. Uh, someone was giving a talk about beliefs. It was a TED talk, and the guy was talking about Earl Nightingale. Yeah. who's another pioneer of the of yeah. personal development. And Earl yeah. Nightingale said, look, if you spent five years for one hour a day working on something, you'd become a master of it in five years. And uh, yeah. and I know that's what you've done. I know that's what, what I've done. And there's so many questions I'd like to ask. But I suppose, you know, for you see, our listeners... Do you see just when you're talking about Earl Nightingale there, like what, um, uh, Bob Proctor actually worked closely beside Earl Nightingale. Um, at that at that time, when I was over the company, it was Nathan Gill Conant was the company, and yes. like like your, yourself, Pete, like and you know I'm studying personal development for for many years, and you know I believe that investing that investing that time and energy and money in yourself, it really makes the difference long term. But there was one thing that that our Nathan Gill that said, and I always I always loved it. 
he, he explained the definition of success and he said the definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal and, and I, I, I just love that saying because so many people you know don't consider themselves to be a success when they're on their journey you know they think about oh whenever I reach the top of that mountain then I will be the success whenever I achieve the million pounds or the million dollars then I will be that success whenever whenever I finally get my body into the best shape that it can be in well then I will be that success but no the definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal when you have that ideal in your mind and your heart and you're taking steps towards it, you are already a success. And the beautiful thing about that is that it, it helps you and it allows you to relax in all fronts. Because in modern day society, there's always this, there's this rush to be there now. You know, there's this idea we think we, we should be there now, but we must remember that where we are now is the perfect place because you're in the perfect place of where your journey is now. And to embrace that, and to take whatever small steps that you have to take in front of you. Yeah, you know, um, very, very, very powerful words. And I just wrote that down and I'm sure many people will write it down as well because if you can enjoy the journey, um, and I'm sure you get asked questions all the time, like, oh, it must be so difficult doing what, I I'm not even gonna go there with you because I know that there's no need. You know, for you, it is about the journey and, and what you can learn along the way. and. You know, I, I, what I'd like to uncover with you um, is just some of the most important fundamentals that, that Stevie has for his life. So you've already said, you know, a few like see, hear and feel yourself already having done what it is that you're setting out to do. And you have a philosophy for, for success, you know, a progressive realization of a of a worthy goal or idea. You know, what it, are the yeah. some of what it's, else? It's, it's actually a, it's actually a worthy ideal. May may actually make me come across sometimes. It's a worthy ideal, ideal. So the, the worthy ideal actually means a worthy ideal of yourself. Mm. You know, it's it's that ideal. It's that it's that a it's that idea of yourself. It's not. It's not. Sometimes you know we can visualize goals and it, it can be all about the goal. But the challenge with the goal is whenever you hit the goal, and we've all achieved many goals, and anybody listening in, you've achieved many goals in your life. But sometimes you may you know feel that when you achieve the goal it maybe doesn't feel the way you think it will feel at that time like I can remember mm -hmm. uh, my goal at one stage was to have 5,000 members uh, gym members and, and it, it was always this big push and pull and hurry and strain to get there and we did get there eventually but there was a lot of stress involved in it and um, it, 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 the day that we got there it was uh, you know it didn't really count for much and, and, and like Five thousand members at that time. It, it was it was equivalent to one hundred and fifty thousand a month, you know, coming into the bank account. But it, it had got lost. It had got it, the goal had got lost because I had I had forgot to um, enjoy the the experience of it. So the worthy ideal goes further than any goal. The worthy ideal is it's all about you know what would be your ideal if you could dream. If you could dream anything, like what would be the most beautiful dream that you could have for you and for and for all of us? Um, William James said, "Dream lofty dreams, and as you dream, you shall become." The bird waits in the egg, the oak sleeps in the acorn, and in the highest vision, a waking angel stirs. Your circumstances may be uncongenial, but they shall not long remain so, if you but perceive an ideal. And move towards it. Wow, I can tell you, Stevie, I'm actually lost for words, um, which is pretty rare. <laughs> you know, just, I use it. <laughs> but again, on my own little thing this morning, I was it's, when we talking about the acorn. I was just uh, mm -hmm. listening to someone talking about the acorn and the fact that, like you said, the oak sleeps in the acorn, and mm -hmm. inside that acorn is generations of acorns gone. Mm -hmm. And That's when right. that acorn can start to grow, that the little hull around it will, will go, but the acorn still carries, uh, you know, the, the legacy. And that's what I feel that every single one of us should do. We should take responsibility for our life and the fact that we are a part of a legacy already of people, mm -hmm. a dynasty of people that got us to this point. Um, and um, you speak with such 
conviction and you speak with such uh, so coming from such a great place so are there any other kind of key uh, yeah. fundamentals that you live by that I'd love you to share with our audience yeah ab- ab- absolutely and, and you, you met Tom uh, you met Tom Hearn there last week you were over with Tom and yeah. Tom, and, and um, like you know I was blessed to meet Tom about I think it was about fi- five months ago to start working with him I'd met him several times before but only really got to know him so actually t- tell us tell us that story because obviously I was with you and thank you so much for introducing me to him but Tell me what he did. He phoned you up after you finished a hundred marathons, and tell us what he said to you. Yeah, he said he told me that he had a he, he told me that he could help me with my breathing. He had a he had something for me that could ha- that could help me, you know. So, but like the amazing thing is, is um, I I put it out there. I wanted I wanted um, to to be, to be able to run to from a running to be easier and to to enjoy. Whenever I started the hundred marathons, the first ten days was tough. And after the first ten days, it got easier. But the fun, funny thing was, I, I always said to myself, after ten days, it's going to be get, it's going to get easier. And um, I'd picked that up from a, a man's book called Jerry Duffy, who ran thirty-two marathons in thirty-two days, and he said that it got easier as he went along. So I, with the training that I had, I um, knew to accept that into my unconscious mind, and uh, and then I began to, you know, a. Uh, constantly allow my mind to dream and see things being easier for me and it got easier after 10 days so i put it out that in this journey um, i wanted to um, have joy the whole time as i'm going around the thing and uh, then tom contacted me and he began to teach me nasal breathing and uh, through nasal breathing it's made me running more enjoyable but it's also helped me to become more centered in myself and uh, one of the things you're saying, because the reason I brought up Tom's name is because one of the things that you're saying there was, you know, what are some of the maybe uh, bits and pieces of gems, and uh, it's letting yourself off the hook, you know, uh, forgiveness. It's like the human condition. Um, we all are human beings, and yes, we're all perfect in our own way, and in our own spiritual sense, we're perfect because your spirit's always perfect. But the human condition, you know, we have flaws, we, we make mistakes, uh, you know, we don't always get every single solitary thing right. And, and sometimes we can beat ourselves up for these things. And if we do this, it makes life more difficult and harder. And um, I, I was always into forgiveness and forgiving people. And look, I'm still a human being like everyone else. And, and uh, I make mistakes like, like everyone does. And we all do. And we can't think that, you know, to be um, to be at our to be at our best doesn't mean that we're not going to make mistakes or uh, do things wrong from time to time. And if we do, just drop the big stick because the world has been ruled for far too long with violence, not just physical violence, but but verbal violence, and we have to allow that to you know disappear yeah we most definitely do i think it's um the the saddest story of humanity is how how unhumane people can be not only to others but more importantly just to themselves and uh, i'd love to just touch on if, if to get your take on something so um this week on my 365 well, my daily periscopes we've been looking at the power of beliefs and i think it's yeah. been a real eye opener for people to realize some of the punishing uh, beliefs they have about themselves you know that yeah. they're not good enough they're not going to be successful where in you in in your mind where does that all come from and, and what do you say to people about changing their beliefs yeah it's so so important pete is it is changing the beliefs and um like i, I had studied a lot with tony robbins and what tony taught me was about the was about how a belief is built up in your mind and uh, what I would have focused on whenever I was running the marathons, what I was focused on all the reasons why this was possible. So a lot of other people would have came to me with, say, limiting beliefs, uh, which would have been, you know, what about your knees and look at the sense of this and you'll run yourself into the ground. And, well, you're, only, you're not running long enough. You should have needed to have been running 10 years before you would attempt something like this. And how are you going to treat your injuries and on and on and on and on, which the response I gave was, I don't, I'm blessed, I don't get injuries. 
But um, the way that I built up the belief, the strong belief that I that I could do it. First of all, I had a feeling of certainty and knew that it, knew that I could achieve this, right? Yeah. Um, but then I went and I ran my first marathon in 2013, and it blew up. It took me four hours and 50 minutes. So, how do you then build up your table of belief? So what I looked at was things like, you know, I'm going to get to be outside all day. I I'm going to get to eat lots of food. I'm going to meet loads of new friends, um, and then things things like this. Uh, I used to do hard labor every day, you know, ten hours a day and six days a week, and that was my life. And I never got a medal for it. And nobody ever said nobody ever said to me, "Look, Stephen, your shoulders will fall off." Uh, my grandfa- my grandfather worked in a quarry, and uh, worked with a spade all his life. Physical hard manual labor, and like. We as people now today, as you said earlier on, like our ancestors have come through great adversity, otherwise we wouldn't be here. All of our ancestors, no matter where you are in the world, no matter who you are, all all the people that came before you have come through great adversity. And those um, those lessons and, and those experiences lie within your genes. But today, most people never get an opportunity to test that. And I firmly believe that any that pretty much anybody could go out there and run 100 marathons in 100 days. But I believe that because I believe that and I believe in the power of the human spirit, the human body and the human mind. Mm. But if you have a limiting belief or a belief around anything, your mind will find the ways to make that true. So I'd always be very aware of the language that I use and very aware of the language that um, the clients use uh, because I would quite often find somebody and somebody say, well, you know, you know, it's going to be hard. You know, this, this we're going to go on this journey, but you know, this journey is going to be hard and I want you to accept that it's going to be hard and there is going to be tough times on it. And I would say no, because as soon as you allow that into your unconscious mind, your unconscious mind will find the ways to make it hard. Um, I would say to you, allow it to be easy. Allow it to be as easy as your breath. Uh, you didn't have to buy this breath that you have. You didn't have to fight for this breath that you have. You All you have to do is receive it. You didn't have to earn this body that you have. You didn't have to fight for this body that you have. All you have to do is receive it. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and as you allow yourself to receive it now, then you allow your journey to become easier. Now that doesn't mean to say that there aren't going to be things that are going to challenge you. Of course there are going to be things that are going to challenge you. But allow them challenges to be to be as joyous as you can. Because without them challenges, and we're all into personal growth, without those challenges, well, you know, you mightn't grow as much. Yeah, it's like uh, the whole thing, you know, where you want to be isn't probably where where you are now so it's <laughs> you're going to be challenged in some way shape or form and if you welcome those those when they happen will grow stronger and we can be more mm. um it, it's and, so go on and, 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 and embrace you know whatever the challenge is and embrace it it's like uh bob proctor will taught me universal laws and uh, one of the one of the beautiful universal laws is the law of polarity which is perception and the law of polarity states if there's an up there's a down if there's a left there's a right if there's an in there's an out you can't have light without dark if there's something if there's something bad about something there has to be something good about it so so again it, it, it's all down to where you want to where you want to put your your focus and we know whatever you focus on is what you feel so your mind works in pictures think of a house think of a car Go into that house, walk into the kitchen, open up the fridge, take out a bottle of milk, pour it into a blue cup. Every time I say a word, a picture, an image flashes onto the screen of your mind. Your mind works in pictures, more like streaming video. Mm. But you can choose what streaming video you want to focus on. And whatever you focus on, you feel. And whatever you feel, you act. Because we're always being told in the past, if you want to get a new result, you know, all you got to do is just do this, do, 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 do this. But, you know, we've all done things before and we've all had plans before, but maybe not followed through on them. 
And you see, because the doing and the action comes from the emotion, comes from how you feel about something. So the most important thing is how you feel about it. And the way you can feel uh, good about things and to help you to move forward wherever you need to move forward, it is focus on the right things about it, you know? Yeah, so, so powerful. So look, just finally, um, tell us, what is it that you want other people who hear you talk, people that see you running this marathon, what is it that you want them to do for themselves? Uh, take a little bit of take a little bit of time, um, just to slow your mind down. And uh, the the simplest way that I find that is just sit down in a chair and take five to ten minutes, just breathing in through your nose, out through your nose, close your eyes, and allow yourself to relax. Allow yourself to feel safe, and whatever ideas then come to your mind and your heart, then follow through on them. Well, I'm definitely going to do that. Let, let's create a, a legacy uh, from this beauty, this information, this inspiration that Stevie has shared with us. Stevie, just remind us again how people can find out more about you and, and what you do and, and obviously your epic adventure. Yeah. So uh, if you want to find out more about the greatest road adventure ever, um, go to www.steviesepicadventure.com, S-T-E-V-E-Y-S, Stevie's Epic Adventure dot com and um, you can go there either facebook or or the website and uh, anything you can do to share the good news really really appreciate this this is a this is an event for for everybody uh everybody to join in and and um, it's not just for runners so but it's for it's for everyone to take part in yeah please you know share you know share this if anyone's ever been touched by autism you know that uh, autistic children they do need uh, they need help, just just like most people. They need help. They need support, and it's great that there are people out there that want to help other people. Um, I also want to thank the company Organo, which is a company that uh, I'm a distributor for, because I know that they're also uh, sponsoring you. Um, you know, which is great. And um, Stevie, I just wanted to really, well, I, really thank you. Yeah, for, sorry, no worries. I know. I just want to say something about Organo too. Is just uh, I just like to say I'd like to thank Organo for for coming on board and sponsoring me and uh, I'm really enjoying the products so I am at the minute I, I'm trying them all and uh, the kids enjoy the hot chocolate, hot chocolate. Uh, my, wife, my wife enjoys the coffee and I'm enjoying the red tea uh, so yeah, it, just, it just makes me feel good when I drink it well that's great and we, those of you that don't know it's just because these products are infused with uh, what the Chinese believe to be the closest thing to nutritional perfection uh, something that dilates blood vessels, gets more oxygen to your tissues, uh, crosses the blood-brain barrier. So it's pretty cool. Thank you, Organo. Stevie, thank you. I, I know I'm going to be coming along the way and being with you wherever I can um, on your epic adventure. It's an absolute joy and inspiration uh, to meet you. And, um, you know, of the 17 principles of Napoleon Hill, the first one being uh, the definiteness of purpose, the second one being the mastermind alliance, and I definitely feel aligned to, uh, to you. I get great strength from you. And I would encourage all of you to stay connected to like-minded people because uh, we can learn, we can grow together, especially when we all have great ideas and great dreams of, of creating a better world. So, Stevie, you're an absolute superstar. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Pete, man. It's, gr it's great to know you, Pete, man. You're a great fella. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I feel blessed to know you, man. Thank you so much. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and if you want more free inspiration to optimize your life so you can achieve your goals in all the different areas of your life, then visit my365.me. That's my M-I 365.me and sign up to 365 days of free coaching with me, Pete Cohen. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.